Good evening, everyone. If 4.15 counts as evening, kind of seems afternoon, evening. I am Kathy Hester, if you didn't already know, and this is my kitchen, and welcome. I hope you enjoy spending some time with me today. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to make a dish, but we're also still talking about this Duo Crisp Instant Pot. So we're gonna talk about that some while things are cooking as well. I see a few people are coming on, so I'm gonna give everybody a little, there we go. I know you guys wanna see this. So what we're gonna to do today is we're gonna be making a recipe that's from the very first Instant Pot cookbook I wrote called The Ultimate Vegan Cookbook for Your Instant Pot. I, I, as I get older, the names are going to need to get a little shorter and a little shorter. There we go. Hi, Jackie and Robin. It's so nice to see you guys. So um, what we're doing today, and for those of you who are just coming on, I'm Kathy Hester. This is my kitchen, and this is the Duo Crisp Instant Pot. And that's what we're going to look at cooking in. And we're going to talk a little bit about it, too. Hey, Joanne and Linda and Laura, yay, and Brandy and Marilyn. You guys are awesome for being on it. So yesterday, we kind of unboxed this um, Duo Crisp, which has this funky air fryer lid that we're not using today, but we'll use it tomorrow. And we'll talk a little bit about it during cooking. So if you notice, either now or when this is done, somewhere around here, there are still links that you can go back and enter to win an Instant Pot Duo Crisp. This is gonna go on till midnight on Thursday, and then I'll announce the winner on Friday. I did add a new way to enter, so if you guys go back and you, uh, the, you to, it's mandatory to enter that you follow um, Instant Pot on Instagram, and all these links are somewhere. If you don't see them, um, I can also come back or someone will pop them in the comments for you. You can join my Facebook group and you can join my newsletter. Those all add extra entries for this drawing. Okay, awesome. And Jackie said she entered today. So I'm going to try something a little different. So this is this is my older cookbook, right? So it's back in the day, and we are literally going to make the easiest thing possible. Pasta, jarred sauce, and some water. Now this pasta is a little different. Um, this is just corn pasta. Usually I like to use a blend of corn and quinoa. So this is kind of a test. This could fail. Let's see what happens. <laughs> and because of that, instead of there being four cups of pasta in there, there are three cups of pasta. And so I kind of have cut the recipe back little by little. Hi, Mary. Awesome to see you again. Okay, so I'm, I've got not quite three cups of jarred sauce. And actually, let me get a, um, a spatula because I know I'm going to need that. And so the recipe originally calls for three cups of water, four cups of sauce, and four cups of pasta. So I'm going to, this is really two and three quarters, so I'm going to add a cup of water, or a quarter cup of water into my sauce to kind of make it up. Now know this, depending on how thick or thin your sauce is, it could change the end result. We might have to cook it a little longer after this, we might have to add some extra water. It's all going to be okay though. Anyway, it's going to happen. So I've got this plugged in. Let me give you an exciting bird's eye view of, oh, they changed. Okay. So I'm going to put, it ended up being, I divided the millimeters, but like a little a near two and a half cups of water instead of three. And I'm okay with, this sauce was pretty thick. This is the sauce with the quarter cup of water added in. And we're gonna put it on the bottom. And that, it is possible, especially if you have an, um, an Evo, for something to burn on the bottom. It is less likely for a duo. However, the reason we wanna add water in here is A, so our pasta can soak it up 
and B so um, our pasta doesn't just end up kind of on the bottom stuck, right? And if we have extra water, we can always cook that off. So then I'm just gonna add in my pasta. Now with this pasta, I encourage you to do rigatoni, spirals. Not, do I mean rigatonis or ziti? I think I mean ziti, okay? And I see here, I'm hearing some questions too. So Jackie says she likes the tinkyata brown rice pasta when I want to go gluten-free. And I eat gluten-free. You can do whole wheat pasta in here too. And I, I don't know what I was thinking, people. I didn't even bring over the top. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Now this is, I have not tried the Instant Pot portion of this, the pressure cooker. So what we're gonna do, and I wanna talk about this really quick too, there's two ways. The way I've done it before was I put it on low pressure. So let's see if we even have that option with pressure. Yes, we do. And how, okay. So with this one, if I press the pressure cooker button more than once, and I don't know if you, no, nope, you can't see it through the camera. You can see low, right? But I wanna make sure to cancel this because I don't want to cook 34 minutes. Um, Joanne says it's been raining on and off all day from Tropical Storm Etta. Yeah, it looked really dark and mysterious yesterday here in North Carolina. Um, and I do hope that it turns out okay. Um, I know that it is rough in Florida and it's hard to have a, a hurricane so late in the season. And Brady says, I always get a burn signal when I use my three or eight quart, but never with my six quart. Interesting. I did try making some grits in the Evo, what are we calling this one? The Duo Evo, Evo Plus. And I did get a burn signal. So I'm gonna try and fix that recipe up a little bit. And Marilyn likes that pasta too. And Joanne says, rain, ba rain bands, but not much wind. So in the original recipe, we cooked this for five minutes on low pressure. And I found on the interwebs a formula. So I was thinking maybe we should do that and see what happens. So you take the lowest number of the cooking time. So this says cooking time 10 to 11 minutes. So we take that to 10. Then we divide it by two, which gives us five. Then we take away two, which leaves three. So let's try three minutes on high and see how that does. And there's gonna be a lot of beeping me going down to three. This is the only time I wish there was kind of like a little number pad. Okay, awesome. And then we don't have to do anything with this and I'll show you the venting system again in case you don't remember it from yesterday. So what's gonna happen is it's gonna build up to pressure which could take X amount of minutes, right? Sometimes it can take between five and 10 minutes to build up to pressure. Then it'll cook for three minutes. With pasta, it's suggested that you let the pressure release pretty easily. Since we're cooking it in the sauce, instead of just boiling it in water, we don't have to worry as much about the water foaming up, which can be an issue in the Instant Pot. So you can either do things like let the pressure come down naturally, or um, I've seen that some people have done an upside down um, strainer like metal strainer and just had it cook in there and that also helps it not to get so foamy but the sauce in there itself should help us um, and Joanne says she gets burn messages a lot and Jackie says when I do pasta in my instant pot I do one minute on high and natural release yeah and it's going to be it's going to be different for every kind of pasta a little bit so I've never cooked the corn pasta in here and I'm trying a new time thing because I just feel that way. Let's see what happens. Um, and also, if you're doing a natural release, which means you're waiting for the pen to come down, all that time is cooking time too. So Jackie, it makes sense that you might do one minute, whereas if I might do three minutes and try and release the pressure earlier. And gluten-free pasta is pretty persnickety, but I did find this corn pasta was held up really well. 
So I thought we'd go ahead and try it. And again, that's from the Ultimate Vegan Cookbook in your, um, for your Instant Pot, not in your Instant Pot. That would be weird. Um, so let's go back up to the top and let's talk a little bit about this, um, some of the interesting things about this. So it has a different kind of release that we're gonna play with. We can press it and we can lock it, or we can just do a little bit. So we'll, we'll be using this for the first time today. This, these things are where the air fryer lid um, goes to. And so, show you upside down. So you can kind of see, see that's gonna go in there and that goes around there. It actually pushes this guy down. And that's how it gets its electricity as well. So it gets its electricity and we're not gonna be using this because while fried ravioli sound good, fried pasta and sauce does not, right? But what you could do with this lid, if we wanted to after that, is maybe we could melt some cheese on top, although I probably wouldn't do that anyhow. I would see this as being two separate things. And what I wanted to, I almost went ahead and started with, um, using the air fryer lid, but let's make sure everything works the way we expect to with the Instant Pot, because if you buy a Duo Crisp, you're going to probably Instant Pot in it, pressure cook way more, or at least equal amounts as you would air fry in it. So I thought that might be a good thing to do. So let's see what else we've got here, some questions. And Marilyn says she gets a burn message in her eight quart, and so does Joanne. And I don't use my eight quart that often. Uh, my three quart is a duo. It's not a duo anymore. It is um, an Evo. And in fact, I get a burn message if I just try to make regular rice. And um, I don't use it as much. But all of my duos work great, but I've not tried that kind of cooking in my eight quart, so I should probably do that and see what happens. It, the Evos are very sensitive. Oh, and Brandy said, I'm living on the edge today. You know it. And she'd like to know how the corn pasta tastes. So um, earlier in the summer, I made kind of um, a Mexican street corn pasta. And I may have made actually pasta salad is what I made and I used this corn pasta just because it's what we had and then later we heated all of it up together and it was really good so typically and I think it's Trader Joe's quinoa it's quinoa and corn sometimes you find quinoa and brown rice those combinations are really good and they hold up a little bit more some brands of gluten-free pasta will just melt away in boiling water on the stove Oops, oh, you guys, do you know what I forgot to do? Press start. Oh, these newfangled gadgets. I was like, why is nothing happening? I hear nothing in there, people. We had decided on three minutes. Start. Next time you guys see, if you see off on there, like do the emergency hand waving GIF or, or something. Okay, so again, in the Eve, if it has a start button on it, you got to use it. I just showed you, and it's a little embarrassing. But you know what would have been really embarrassing is 30 minutes later when I'm like, why is nothing working? Maybe this is broken. But now I see on and high in three minutes. I know. Um, Joanne says she doesn't use the eight that often because she's just a two-person family, which is the same thing for me. Um, and oh my, that pasta salad was amazing. And so Brandy, you would have that. It's definitely in one of the classes that was in Kathy's Cooking Club. So if you go and log in, cause you're in Kathy's Cooking Club, you can go watch it. You can make it right now. And I even encourage you to make it hot and not a pasta salad if you want to. Cause Brandy, did I not see snow on your Instagram? 
which I'm wearing shorts because it was 75 again today, which is not normal. It's not normal at all. Um, and Jackie says she finds corn-based pasta is harder for me to cook to the right consistency. Um, and the tinkyada, which I'm probably saying wrong, has a texture more like white pasta that her husband likes. And usually my test, so like I can almost see it when I'm boiling it on the stove, if it's, I've gotten some multi-grain pastas that sounded so good and healthy, and then when I look in, like ha you could see like it coming apart. And, and it wasn't even just like it broke some, like I'm thinking maybe this will break some. Eh, we're okay with that. It's our dinner. I'm not serving it to anyone fancy. But um, to have it just dissolve, that's kind of disheartening. And, oh, and another thing I brought up yesterday is that it doesn't have the removable cord. It actually, the cord is just right on in there, which is fine. Um, and yet, and Marilyn makes two pounds of beans in the eight quart and, freeze, and freezes individual serving packets for my husband. That is awesome. And Marilyn, just so you know, we all want to marry you. If there was any doubt in your mind, <laughs> you make the most amazing things and you are the dehydrator queen. It's kind of awesome. Um, your husband is a lucky man. Now, I washed everything in here, but see, I can smell something now. Yeah, I can hear it. I don't know if you guys can hear something that tiny. Now, I, do, I did notice yesterday, too, when I had the air fryer lid on, it's off gassing a little bit just from the heat, but that's normal with a new appliance that has plastic anywhere. And I'm super sensitive. It's not anything gross, but I can tell that it's definitely getting warm. It's not hot on the outsides. I'm wondering, we, when we did this before too, when we, um, before would be yesterday if you weren't here, and we, I went ahead and just put the air fryer lid on and let it go to see what would happen. And um, I was touching around here again, and like even now, this is cool. And I definitely hear some water going in there, or some boiling type action or simmering in there. So I wonder if this is more insulated. And if so, that would make it pretty nice for um, families, maybe with, you still don't want young children touching any of this because it's going to be hot somewhere but you're going to have less accidents like s slow cookers get hot on the outside air fryers get hot typically um, instant pots and um, multi cookers do too fun factoid okay let's see what else we've got uh, and jackie said i'm saying the name correctly yay uh, and brandy said she got brandy is in the canada and she said she, we received tons of snow on Saturday. They were calling for 15 to 25 centimeters. Not sure how much fell, but it was fun trying to find my driveway. <sighs> and see, like that's when I just want to transport you here so you can take a nice walk outside without your coat on and watch the fall leaves turn. Because they're really, they're turning late. From the hurricane before this one, we just had a, we had some storms. We didn't really get the hurricane part of it. Um, but so we dropped lots of pine needles, lots of leaves, and then right after that, things started changing colors a little bit. So do you guys, okay, great. I'm, anything you wanna talk about while we're waiting for stuff to cook? Cause this isn't even up, it's not up to pressure yet, but I hear that it's something is happening. And also, I chose to do this instead of the water pressure uh, or the water test because I'm a crazy person. So it's always best to do the water test or um, to make some chai tea, which is a way to, to make sure this unit is working. But I decide, I, sometimes I will do something like this too. Pasta and sauce, if it's not done all the way, if something goes wrong with this, this unit could be defective. And I'll just go ahead and finish it on the stove. So it's not really a big risk. It's a little easier when you're on the vegan side of life. Like I would not want to cook meats 
in something I wasn't super sure of, though honestly I wouldn't want to cook meat anyhow, <laughs> I can honestly say. But just so you know, this is why I'm making that decision. You can feel it's getting warm here on these top metal plates a little bit. And this is still just totally, this has got to be insulated. And it's probably insulated just for the heat that it's, you know, the dry heat it's putting down another way. Uh, Brandy said that would be wonderful, the fall weather and not the storm. And see, I, could make, I wish we could trade places and then I could sit in your house in the front of the fireplace in like a cozy, all the cozy clothes. Because I couldn't believe I had to get shorts out again. Like I had, I was like ready for sweatpants season, you know. And then I got hot and we've got the house open. It's just, it's a little bit of a, oh, excellent. And Anita is here. Yay. And she came in late and probably some other people have as well. So just a few things. We are testing out the pressure cooker function on our Duo Crisp that we unboxed yesterday. So if you didn't get to see that, you can go back to Plant-Based Instant Pot and you can find that video. It shouldn't be very far down at all. We are making, to test, instead of doing water tests, we are making a one-pot pasta dish with um, corn ziti and some jarred sauce and water. And we talked about, um, the other thing is, so I had it where we, I was doing it on low in my recipe, but I found like um, a how to do pasta um, kind of arithmetic sort of thing, equation on the interwebs, and we're trying that. So you take the lowest number, because usually it's like 8 to 10 minutes. This was 10 to 11 minutes. So you take the lowest one, which is 10, Divide it by 2, which makes 5, and then minus 2. No matter what you got here, it's minus 2. So we did 3, we're doing 3 minutes on high. We're waiting for it to come up to pressure. And this is how we're kind of testing and seeing. Though I will, you know, say the corn pasta I haven't cooked in the Instant Pot yet. So I'm excited to see what happens. It cooks up great on the stove. And so again, this is the one I got. And we got it, and Joanne already knows, if, the, if there was a, a winner to be had, I got a case of it at the Amazon close, Closeout Warehouse store. It's like every day is a different price. So like the first two days, they just empty pallets of stuff. And it could, I've gotten Amy's Chili and really good, nice five-star balsamic drizzles and hemp milk. But then also they will have I'm sure, ring lights or galoshes or shirts. We actually got, oh, not quite, it's getting there, it's getting there. Um, so I get all kinds of stuff there. And in fact, I'm trying to remember what we got the other week. But one time I even got a 25 pound bag of Bob's one-to-one -one gluten free flour. So that's a $100 bag of stuff, and I paid $7 for it. Thank you very much. I feel good about that. Um, so close. So close. Um, and Jackie says she freezes rice and beans individually for herself since she's the only plant-based eater. It makes for easy meals, and that's amazing. And you could even do the same thing with some things like make some cruciferous crunch and freeze it too. So you could throw it in and do like a quick stir fry. Ha! Now, in most of, and actually you're not going to see it that way. Let's see if I can make this work because I don't want to unplug it. See, can you, yeah, you, you guys can kind of see. See, I know it's a little fuzzy, but see how that's up above? So, some of the Instant Pots had little red things up. They've done all different kinds of things. And now it goes up above. And I think that's pretty awesome. It's a really good visual way of seeing. And let me see if we can also see it overhead. Yeah, you can. So even overhead, you can tell that that's come up a bit just because you can see the shadowy part there. <laughs> and Brandy's telling me, don't watch it, the pasta won't cook. 
I'm like, I know, I know, it's always, put it back that way. All right. And Brandy says when it's inside, it's nice, but when it can drop to minus 40 with the wind chill, and that's Celsius, at least, that's something, right? Um, and Brandy says, have you tried more than rice? It's rice, lentils, chickpeas, and peas. It's pretty good. I have some in my pantry, but I have not used it yet. Also, the place that Cheryl really likes right now called Kava. That, yeah, I know you guys saw like the shock. It was not this coming up to temperature, but it was that the living room light turned on at exactly the same time. I kind of felt like there was a poltergeist or actually a friendly ghost involved because we have our lights on Alexa to come on. Um, I think it's supposed to come on at sunset though. Maybe Cheryl's changed them. So Marilyn says Costco has a large package of yoga organics mixture of brown rice, lentils, and quinoa that's really tasty. Oh, yum. Okay, and Kate says, where is that again? It is in the Ultimate Vegan Cookbook for your Instant Pot, but I will read out the numbers. So I will tell you, I had to change it a little bit. So my original numbers were four cups of store-bought pasta sauce, could be homemade pasta sauce. Three cups of water, because we want to water it down so that it doesn't just stick at the bottom of the Instant Pot. If, depending on how thick or thin your sauce is, you may have to do some things after, which hopefully I will be demoing for you. And then um, four cups of pasta. It's just a little easier to go that way. Right now, what I typically use in there is, um, even before is gluten-free pasta, I usually use the brown rice quinoa or the quinoa corn. Um, and spirals are penne. Don't you... You can make spaghetti and fettuccine in your pot, but it's a little harder and you're gonna get some clumps that you have to kind of mix around in the sauce. And maybe we'll do the mushroom fettuccine another night. Um, but you may have to do some manual work to get all that to do. You also don't wanna use the t like couscous, the teeniest, tiniest pasta that could um, plug up when we're releasing the pressure and stuff. So you want to be mindful of that. So four cups, of, so what I ended up doing was three cups of pasta sauce, three cups of pasta, and two and a half-ish cups of water. And then you can either cook it on low for five minutes, and we use the handy dandy instant pot pasta equation that I found on the internet randomly so it'll be very exciting and so we took the lowest number of you know 8 to 12 minutes or whatever so you, mine was 10 to 11 took the 10 minutes divide it by 2 that gives you 5 minus 2 gives you 3 on high 3 minutes on high is what we're cooking it at right now <laughs> buying queen <laughs> Costco's got some awesome stuff though um, and Brandy says she's tried the five grain, which is really awesome. Okay, that was a quick three minutes. Okay, and Amazon Return Center's brick and mortar outlets, yeah. And uh, now I'm craving pasta. So it would be good for us to let some of the pressure out naturally, but let's just see what happens when I press this. So, and actually, I'll show you this from overhead. Let me just make sure I get it to where I'm not going to hit the camera lens. There we go. So, this says press on it. As I press, it lets it out. So, you know how that's a good way to just let it out little by little. I could push it down and lock it. And you can see some water gathers around there. Actually, let's see if I can get this a little bit. No, it's not, it's a little bit better. And so if this was a bigger one, I would just tweak that part. 
It's not the same, but in the bigger ones that don't have the push down, you can just do that to do the same thing, to let it out little by little. So I'm not pushing it all the way down. But if I do, it'll hold, and I just move that. Okay, so that's how this one works. So you can control this. Yeah, the knob isn't attached. It's actually completely separate. Um, usually there's a little thing on here, and that's what you jiggle to make that come out a little bit. So again, if I press it all the way down, but then I can just get that knob part. So I can let it do this for a while while it seems okay. As you can notice, the pin is still up, so that means we're not going to be able to open it. And if I've misjudged on the amount of sauce, the amount of water, we can fix that in this next step too. We can go ahead and put it on saute for a while. We can, you know, there's all different kinds of things we could do. And I'll be interested to see if three minutes is the perfect time or not. Because I'm, I'm definitely interested in that. Because what I found hard when I, this was in the first book that I wrote, so it was several years ago. Oop, and the pen just dropped. Yeah, that Instant Pot is pretty cool. And I think that's what, why I want to do one day that I do an Instant Pot recipe and one day that I do an air fryer recipe because it's nice to know what's different. So I'm going to just hit that and let it come back up. And you can even, can you guys see how, yeah, see how when you, it pushes it from a different place. But for those of you maybe who have been um, nervous, well, the pasta isn't falling apart, so that's something. I know I can stick this on either side, right? But in case you didn't know that, you do now. I'm going to sit it over to the side because we may have work to do. There's dinner at stake here. Oh, and speaking of that, let me turn on the fan <laughs> so we can see that overhead view without fogging up the camera. That should help a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so you can see the pastas together. There's some thickness on the bottom, but nothing that's horrible. You can see a few pieces kind of were a little bit stuck, but nothing that would do a burn message. And so I'm just kind of going in there and, and you can, and so this is what I was talking about. It's not gonna, can you go, um, can, you guys can't see that either. Let me get a fork. So there is a little bit, A, ooh, that pasta feels pretty good. And I'll get this on here so I can show you. I won't turn it over till I can get here. Can you guys see that? So that's not just sauce, that's where it got a little bit burnt on the bottom. The pasta itself that's, that went all the way down. But it's not like burned, it's just like a little bit colored. So nothing's burned, nothing, nothing smells burned. Okay, and that I probably could have used a little bit less water. But honestly, let's try some pasta, huh? This seems to be... I'm going to let it cool for a second, and I'll answer questions while it's cooling, and then I'll try it. And then Marilyn says I'm hungry, and um, let's find out what the bite's on it. It's perfect. The internet wins. Um, a lot of times, especially if I'm doing whole wheat pasta, or a more whole grain-ish pasta. 
I cook it a little bit past al dente, so I tend to add some more um, time on it. That's how I got Cheryl to eat whole wheat pasta. That is how I plan to get Cheryl's mother to eat whole wheat pasta. We made whole wheat pasta for her family a couple of years ago, and her dad was like, okay, that's fine. Um, we did make it with like some Beyond Beef crumbles or something like it, that in there. We thought it would be interesting. He wasn't thrilled about those. Mom liked those. Mom was not happy it was whole wheat pasta. However, I bet you I could get some quinoa brown rice pasta on her. So the only thing I would say is that a few pieces, I hesitate to say stuck or burned because I just think they were on the bottom and moving it around like this is fine. So A, we got to do the, the water test, only we used water and spaghetti sauce and pasta. And again, I don't necessarily suggest that you do that because it could be that it didn't work at all and nothing happened or that something else happened. But I just kind of wanted to give it a little bit of oomph. Now, this is going to be our dinner, and it, you can cook chunky pasta, so like elbows, rigatoni, um, spirals, ziti, something like nice and chunky. Throw in with some pasta sauce, so you're going to do equal amounts pasta sauce and, past, and pasta. So we did three cups of each, and then we did about two and a half cups. I probably could have gone two and a quarter, but I'm not sure how much more pasta might have stuck to the bottom had I done that. And see, you can kind of see a piece there that has a little bit of the toastiness on it. Nope, you still can't see that. As soon as I think you can see it, then it goes away. It rolls. It's, it's sad. So there you go. Can you guys see that? And so it's not really burnt because it's, it's still coming off but it is a spot that it kind of held down a little bit more. And I'll eat it too. And let's see if it's any tougher. Okay, I'm eating it off of this one. It's just al dente. It's not undone in any way, shape, or form. So you might come up with a couple of them that have that. If this was a little al dente, you could just leave it on warm and leave it here for like five or ten minutes because it's going to keep cooking then as well. The, the thing you want to avoid is overcooking it. But what's cool is you can teach your children how to do this. And once you have, if you usually get a certain kind of pasta sauce, and Trader Joe's has one that has um, no oil in it by the way. It may have salt and sugar in it. I'm not sure. But you can also um, make your own and you would want to have it thawed out. And this is why. Because if it was thawing out and the water with the pasta, the pasta could get really underneath all of it. And we want to try and keep some sauce and things like that below just so the pasta doesn't get on there and stick and burn onto there in any given time. It's a precaution. Oh, and Cheryl says, Cheryl is me, plant-based instant pot. She says, yay, I'm excited to taste this. I'm glad because it's dinner. And I'm going to make a big yummy salad to go along with it. Um, but yeah, Joanne, the, the pasta's great. Now, when you change your kind of pasta, sometimes your brand of pasta or your cut of pasta, it could change. But like if you always use ziti, and like, so if I use exactly the same pasta and sauce to make this again, I know exactly what to expect. Just make sure if you're using something a little bit smaller, it probably will have a different cooking time as well. So again, the, the intranet's formula is the lowest number in your cooking time divided by two, the result of that minus two minutes on high. So that gave us three minutes. Exactly. It's like making it on the stove. Sometimes a piece or two sticks, but it's not burnt. It really is kind of like that. Um, it could be a certain kind of pasta could, could stick and burn a little bit more. If you get something that's denser and really heavy and hefty, 
it could it could stay down a little more but these are pretty chunky little pieces of pasta and it tastes really good and Cheryl says she's okay with the toasty bits and um, Brandy says I was lazy and cooked pasta shells in the instant pot just the shells and water I overcooked it and it wasn't good well the shells would be really hard because you're talking about the big shells that you stuff right and those are going to just naturally sink more to the bottom and then they're going to gather more weight as they soak in that liquid um, what I would do next time is I would put water like a cup depending on which instant pot size you're using but about a cup of water your trivet in there and put like a stainless steel or pyrex container with the water in the pasta then it's not going to like get, it will get heavier but it's not going to sink through the pyrex down to the hot part of the instant pot and Peggy says what's the name of the warehouse store you use so I believe they're talking about maybe you're talking about Costco there is this weird way it's called Ben City bargains is the Amazon closeout and sometimes they do target closeouts or some other things too it's real obvious which one it is um, but actually a lady on Saturday we went she got it, she was there like right when it opened which we don't go because it's still a little too crowded I like that it's 40,000 square feet so I can get away from anybody who feels a little unsafe and there's lots of airspace it's almost like being outside um, because it is a real warehouse um, got a an saran wrapped up perfect MacBook Pro $8 you know, I was pretty just happy that I got some sea, teriyaki seaweed crisps. I got like a case of those for $7. So sometimes you find stuff that's like $7 in the store. And sometimes you find things that are thousands of dollars, but you just never know. Or sometimes things are broken. So we, um, you just never know. You just never know what you're going to find. And it's been my exciting hobby place. But we, we've gotten things like cases of Amy's soups, and we were at the store today. It was almost $4 a can. We paid $8 for a case. So we feel like we're vegan preppers now, though. We are ready for staying. If there's a stay-at-home order coming up, we got it covered. I got enough food for us to last through the winter. So... Um, and the formula, and that's a great question. So Joanne says, does the formula call for quick release? And I would say quick-ish release. Like if you know that your Instant Pot is going to spew stuff, either just kind of press it and do that intermittent quick release. Don't just slam it on because then water and sauce is going to start spewing everywhere and make everybody unhappy. Um, and then you can kind of decide for yourself like for me I wouldn't mind if this was I mean I think it's perfect al dente for anybody else I kind of like mine cooked a little extra so I don't mind that this is sitting on the heat um, but I want you to have that choice so I'd rather you try and release the pressure as quickly as you can safely do so then check it because you can always let it sit on warm in the sauce and it will keep cooking and Marilyn's fixing this for supper with the cruciferous crunch that I have in the fridge. I made a big batch of cruciferous crunch with Brussels sprouts. And if you guys are like, what is cruciferous crunch and what are they talking about? There is a video on here. If you search in the videos, cruciferous crunch. And so it's like shredded cabbages and broccoli stems and carrots and maybe Brussels sprouts. And then you can put it in salads or stir fries or soups. It's awesome. It's awesome. So it's my take on Trader Joe's Cruciferous Crunch that you can buy there. Um, yeah, and Brandy did say the big shells. I kind of thought so. It's okay. Um, there's always a win. So every time we make a mistake or something doesn't go the way we want it to, that just means we learn something super cool to share with the world. So try and take that today. I'm, I'm, I've been working really hard on this personally, you know, because that's one of the reasons too. Like today, I could have been like, well, if not I cook this pasta with this sauce, maybe I shouldn't do it in front of the whole world. But instead, I would rather take a chance on this failing and going, hey, you know what? That internet formula didn't work. What I do next time is. 
right? So just be brave and be bold and know that sometimes things aren't going to work out right then, but you can turn it into something else, right? I probably would have taken those shells if they weren't super burnt and just like mixed them up, with ch chopped them up and mixed them up and made a casserole, right? There's always something you can do. Um, Yeah, and Brandy's saying it would be tempting to go in every day just to see what they have to the Amazon place, the Bend City um, Bargains. And that one is in Burlington, North Carolina, Lexington, North Carolina, Wilmington, North Carolina. They're opening one in Greensboro. And it is tempting to go in every day, but here's the good part. They only put new stuff out two times. So like Friday and Saturdays, it's $8, and that's when they put new stuff out. So they put half of it out each day. Sunday it goes down to $7, then it goes down to $5, $3, then there's $1 for everything and bags of stuff. But I've gone on dollar day and what I found is like super expensive vitamins, like kind vegan vitamins. We found a jar of $70 vitamins for a dollar. But you have to open it up, make sure nobody poked a hole in it and broke the seal. You have to check the dates on everything. So it's kind of like my perfect combo of like discount stores and thrift stores all rolled up into one. <laughs> and Joanne says, so, so slow release. A little, yeah, you know, it's whatever you like. Like, and I'll let you see now, because this has been on warm, and just the steam coming out, that's made it, see how it's thickening up, the sauce? And also, when you're doing it like this, because we're not rinsing the pasta, if you rinse it or not, that extra um, starch from the pasta will thicken in the sauce, too. And I think that makes it extra yummy, personally. That's how I feel. You feel how you feel, and you make your pasta the way you like it. And if somebody has to say something about it, you tell them to talk to me. And uh, Jackie has cruciferous crunch. We're all doing cruciferous crunch. Yay. Okay, you guys, do you have any questions tomorrow? Um, at some point, I, again, I have kind of a weird scheduled up day. I will try to put it at least a half an hour to an hour before I go live. It will either be lunchtime or dinner time, and we'll make something in the air fryer. Part of me wants to either make um, cauliflower poor boys because I have a recipe and something else, or to make some soy curls, like Cajun soy curls, and try that out. So if you guys have some ideas, you let me know. Um, yeah, it thickened up quick. And I didn't put it, you know, this is another lesson. It's a lesson to me probably more than you, because when I see it, ooh, it's the water. Maybe I should put it on saute. Oh, maybe you should, <laughs> this is to me. Maybe I should just wait for five minutes and see what happens on warm before I panic and try to like spew everything out. Because when you do um, turn it up, if you have a lid from a pan that fits on top of your Instant Pot, if you've got it on um, high especially, it will help everything not splatter out. You can just kind of tilt it like you would on your stove to let some of that steam still escape. But especially with something like pasta sauce, you don't really want it just spreading all over the world. Uh, Brandy says she's going to teach her daughter this, po this um, technique. She loves pasta. And I know Kate's daughter just became vegan. Congratulations, Kate's daughter, if you're here. And I do not know your name yet. I apologize. But this is a great, easy thing to make. And... You know, as much as sometimes I go, oh, pasta and sauce, you were such a nice thing in my 20s. There's still times now that I'm like, this has been a long day. A lot has happened. I can make a salad, instant pot, make me the rest of my dinner. And Jackie says, Cajun soy curls sound good. I really like jambalaya or gumbo style dishes, I know. And, and even the... Um, because I've got a bunch of cauliflowers in the fridge, so actually I really am thinking cauliflower, poor boy, and I have a gluten-free baguette that I've been saving for a special occasion, and that could be tomorrow. Is it Kaylin, Kate? So 
tell me if I'm saying it wrong. I think it's Kaylin. And if it is, if it's not Kaylin, I am sorry for calling you the wrong name. If it is Kaylin, thank you so much for joining us. And if you have any questions at all about cooking vegan or you need some recipes, you are also welcome to email me at kathyhester at gmail.com or join the private Facebook group, Vegan Recipes, Cooking with Kathy Hester. Everybody's super friendly and they would love to help you. Um, Brandy says, can you use frozen cauliflower for the poor boys? I believe you can. I do believe you can. I have not done it, but I don't see why not. You might, trying to think if it's good or bad to thaw it. I'll think about this before tomorrow, okay? Uh, we'll do cauliflower and I'll think about that for sure. And it is Kaylin. Okay, awesome. Um, and again, this was done in the Duo Crisp Instant Pot, which has an air fryer lid that we did not use today. And somewhere, depending on where you're watching this, you too can sign up to win one, so please do. You have to follow Instant Pot on Instagram and then alternately to get some extra um, extra entries, you can join Vegan Recipes Cooking with Kathy Hester. If you're already a member, just say you did it. I won't say anything. Same thing. Or you can join the newsletter, my newsletter. Same thing. If you're already on it, go back and put it on your thing. Extra entry. And I'll see if I can think of something else for tomorrow to make it more exciting. Okay. Um, and the Jackie, the cauliflower will be air fried for the poor boys. Yes, it will. So we're going to use the air fryer lid tomorrow and see how that goes. And we've got, we'll, we'll talk more about the accessories that came with it. And we'll probably try out a two level thing and see if that works out. It may or may not. The suspense is going to kill us. So be sure to come back. Okay, you guys, I'm going to have feed Cheryl some dinner, and I hope you guys have a great rest of your night.